Hello everyone, this is Recap Revelations. We're entering the fascinating world of the film Lethal Weapon today. Warning spoilers ahead. Hold on tight, keep an eye out for the exciting adventure, and enjoy the ride. The story starts with a lovely young blonde woman clad in a skimpy nightgown with one breast exposed, sleeping on a bed in a high-rise suite. She takes some medicines in addition to cocaine to become high. She makes her way to the balcony, hops up on the railing, stops, and then lets go, tumbling onto a parked car below. Roger Murtaugh, who is at home having a bath, entering the room with a birthday cake, his spouse and their three children shout happy birthday. Murtaugh turns 50 today. Concerned about aging, he decides to cut his beard after noticing that his daughter Rian has begun to grow facial hair. He is also disturbed when Rian tells her father that she plans to wear an extremely skimpy black gown on New Year's Eve. A rough-coated collie dog approaches a trailer home on the seashore. Martin Riggs, a 37-year-old man who is just getting out of bed. He slumbers naked. Looking worn out, Riggs takes a quick stroll to the restroom where he buys himself a drink and a cigarette and gives Sam, his dog, a treat. In response to a call on the female jumper at the high-rise, Murtaugh attends. He hears from a dispatcher en route that Dixie, a drunken and nude prostitute, is also present. The deceased individual is recognized as Michael and Claire's daughter Amanda Hunsaker. Murtaugh recognizes Michael as his former combat partner. Meeting with three individuals who are selling cocaine at a Christmas tree lot is Riggs' next assignment. They are overjoyed when Riggs, posing as a buyer, offers to buy all they own for $100. They believe they would receive $100,000, but they are agitated when Riggs only gives them $100. They are informed they are under arrest when Riggs pulls out his badge. A man refers to the badge as phony and labels Riggs as insane. In response, Riggs pulls a Three Stooges routine, slapping a few dealers and threatening to shoot them with his Beretta while stating they must lie down or risk being jailed. There's a firefight that follows. Just as three other masked assailants emerge with firearms from behind some trees, more undercover police officers show there. One of them murders the villain that Riggs was conversing with by mistake because they miss Riggs. Before one of the bad guys grabs Riggs and puts a gun to his head, he shoots two of them. Then, when he yells for the man to shoot him, Riggs adopts the demeanor of an actual lunatic. When he doesn't, Riggs gives him a hard headbutt, takes hold of the rifle, and appears ready to shoot the man in the head before quickly backing away. Riggs looks at a picture of Victoria and gets quite depressed. He picks up his gun, slides in a hollow point shell, and presses the barrel into his forehead. He pauses, then slides the barrel back into his mouth and lifts the hammer. He can't help but cry as he thinks about killing himself and going down with his wife, but he can't. Victoria is told she will have to wait for him. The police psychiatrist, Dr. Stephanie Woods advises Captain Murphy that Riggs is probably suicidal and poses a risk to others as well as himself. The skipper is unwilling to act and disagrees. It seems that he thinks Riggs is only trying to get a pension and medical discharge for himself. Murphy icily informs her that they will know she is correct if Riggs takes his own life. Amanda Hunsaker was found to have used cocaine and taken barbiturates laced with drain cleaner, according to the investigation and to her death. Thus, the drain cleaner would have killed her in a matter of minutes even if she had leaped to her death. Besides, there was proof that she had shared a bed with someone else that evening. Her death is therefore deemed to be a murder. In Homicide, Captain Murphy chooses to transfer Riggs to collaborate with Murtaugh. Riggs takes out his gun to play with it at the police station just before their first meeting. When Murtaugh notices that he assumes Riggs is a crazy man with a pistol and tries to take him out. With a fast judo move, Riggs knocks Murtaugh unconscious and throws him to the ground. Another cop introduces Murtaugh to his new partner. Later, they compare guns as they stroll to their covert vehicle. Riggs carries a Beretta 9mm. Using a more conventional Smith & Wesson, Murtaugh says he also knows that Riggs knows some sort of martial arts, so he figures they'll have to consider Riggs a lethal weapon. Both Murtaugh and Riggs realize they were being fucked by the system, evident in their pairing. Riggs doesn't miss the opportunity to call Murtaugh's gun an old-timer's gun. Mr. Joshua and Mr. Mendez rendezvous outside a nightclub. Joshua escorts Mendez inside to meet with General Peter McAllister, who leads a group of ex-CIA and Special Forces men who now use their skills and former contacts in Asia to participate in the illegal drug trade. Mendez wants to set up a purchase of heroin, but he's upset about his rude reception and doesn't find it impressive that a bunch of mercenaries are handling the transaction. To make sure that Mendez understands the gravity of the situation, McAllister makes him hold his own cigarette lighter under his bare arm until it burns him. 
Joshua doesn't recoil from the flame and grimaces, absorbing the pain. When Murtaugh visits Michael Hunsaker, he tells him that his daughter was murdered. He asks Michael why he had been contacting him for the past few days, and Hunsaker explains that he was trying to help Amanda escape the world of drugs, prostitution, and hardcore pornography that she had fallen into. Hunsaker seems very upset about the murder of his daughter, and he reminds Murtaugh that he owes him a favor, which Murtaugh acknowledges as a significant debt, because Hunsaker had saved his own life during the Vietnam War. Hunsaker looks upset that his daughter was killed, and he wants Murtaugh to find and kill the person responsible. When Murtaugh and Riggs get a call about a potential suicide jumper, they go to the scene where Riggs claims to have experience with suicide negotiation. They get out on the ledge with the man, who is very agitated and keeps telling Riggs to stay away and not touch him. Riggs offers the man a cigarette, which he accepts, and then he abruptly reaches out and snaps a handcuff on the man's arm and then the other cuff to his own arm. He then throws the key down to the street and tells him that if he jumps now, he'll have company and he'll have murdered a police officer. The man becomes even more agitated when Riggs furiously asks him if he really wants to jump. After diverting the jumper's attention long enough for the ground unit to inflate the cushion, they land on a massive inflated cushion and emerge unharmed. As they land on the ground, Riggs cheerfully offers to take him back up to jump again, but he is screaming for the police and firefighters to remove Riggs from him. Furious, Murtaugh drags Riggs to a nearby shop where they have a heated argument about Riggs being reckless and having a death wish. Murtaugh tells Riggs to commit suicide if he wants to, and he will do it if he wants to. Then he puts his gun in Riggs' hand and holds it close to his head, daring him to do so. When Riggs begins to press the trigger, Murtaugh has to put his hand in front of the hammer to keep it from falling. At that point, Murtaugh is convinced that Riggs is genuinely insane and is not just playing a charade to get a medical pension. Riggs's expression softens and he becomes more composed, muttering about getting something to eat. Murtaugh is disturbed about a lot of things right now, including his age, his partner, and all the risks he has to deal with. He talks with Dr. Woods on a cell phone, and she verifies that he should be very concerned about what Riggs might do out in the field. When Riggs and Murtaugh get to a gated community home where two girls are huddled over a table covered in drugs, they see a man with a shotgun and he shoots at them. Murtaugh shoots the man in the leg, and while Riggs is putting handcuffs on the girls, Murtaugh approaches the man and tells Riggs that since he shot the man in the leg and didn't kill him as Riggs would have, they can now question him. When Riggs is lifting the man to his feet, the man pulls out a handgun. Riggs pulls out his gun and shoots the man before he can shoot Murtaugh. The man falls onto some plastic sheeting covering a swimming pool gets tangled up and drowns before Riggs and Murtaugh can shoot him. Murtaugh brings Riggs home with him so that they may have supper and get to know his family. The two youngest children, Nick and Carrie, inquire as to whether or not Riggs is a crook. Rian is enamored with Riggs, which Roger immediately observes and finds upsetting. After looking in the oven and failing to find the substance that is being cooked, Murtaugh's wife Trish tells him that she is preparing a pot roast. Murtaugh doesn't seem to be much of a cook, and he later finds it hard to believe that Riggs thinks the roast was good, even though Riggs later admits it wasn't. Murtaugh takes Riggs outside to see his fishing boat. While he's working in the engine compartment, Riggs reaches over and starts the engine. Murtaugh jumps up and calls Riggs an asshole for scaring him. The younger kids at the dinner table start making up a silly rap song. Roger joins in and everyone laughs heartily. As Murtaugh reminds her that she's grounded for smoking a joint, Rian asks her father for permission to go out with Mark, but he says no. As he heads back home, Riggs tells Murtaugh that he has a nice family and talks about important trust when Murtaugh adds a surprising fact about a man killed in Laos and windy weather at a thousand yards. Subsequently, that evening, Murtaugh opens a sizable mail envelope containing a VCR and the 1983 Palos Verde High School yearbook. The VCR shows Amanda Hunsaker, partially nude and showing off alongside a group of women, Murtaugh turns off the video in disgust and discovers Amanda has a twin sister in the yearbook. The next morning, Riggs wakes Roger up with a cup of coffee, babbling about a few clues regarding Amanda's death. Roger angrily orders Riggs out of his bedroom. Murtaugh and Riggs go to the shooting range and try to piece together the events of the night that Amanda died. They come up with a thin explanation regarding Dixie and her eyewitness account of the incident but decide they have to check every lead. Murtaugh is proud of the grouping he has after his first round of shots. Riggs shoots and brings in his target, a much tighter grouping than Murtaugh's, who sarcastically asks if Riggs sleeps with his gun under his pillow. 
When Murtaugh and Riggs arrive at Dixie's house, four small children immediately recognize them as law enforcement officers and begin yelling as the detectives approach the house, it explodes and catches fire. The two hastily go back to their car to call for an ambulance and the fire department. Later in the smoldering wreckage, Riggs discovers the remains of a mercury switch, evidence of a professional explosives job, likely by someone with military training. Alfred, a six-year-old boy, tells them he saw a man reading the meter while he was hiding under the porch earlier in the day, describing the man as tall, white, blonde, and sporting an Army Special Forces tattoo, similar to the one on Riggs's arm. Riggs gets quite worried and can be heard murmuring to himself, wondering if the fire department has any openings. Riggs muses a little about the circumstances of what they might be dealing with mercenaries and mercury switches. Murtaugh goes to see Hunsaker at his home where a memorial service is being held for his daughter. He demands to know what Hunsaker is involved with that got his daughter killed. Hunsaker is reluctant to answer because he has another daughter he's worried about, but eventually, he tells Murtaugh that for more than two years he has been involved in a heroin smuggling operation run by a group of ex-CIA and Special Forces mercenaries that came from a unit called Shadow Company, operating under the guise of Air America a CIA-fronted organization that ran their version of the Vietnam War from Laos. The scheme is masterminded by a retired general, Peter McAllister, the former commander of Shadow Company and his chief enforcer, Mr. Joshua. Hunsaker was laundering the group's profits through his bank. McAllister had ordered Amanda's murder when her father, Michael, unsuccessfully tried to alert Murtaugh to the scheme in an attempt to get out of the business. As Murtaugh attempts to get Hunsaker to reveal the entirety of his operation, the window behind Hunsaker explodes and Hunsaker falls dead. Outside, perched in a helicopter, is Mr. Joshua with a large sniper's rifle in his hands. Riggs gives chase and fires multiple times at the helicopter but without effect. Joshua tells McAllister that Hunsaker has been talking to two police investigators, and McAllister gives Joshua the order to pursue them. That evening, while Riggs is out on the street asking a prostitute if she knew Amanda Hunsaker, Joshua drives by in a car and fires a shotgun at him, Riggs takes the hit in the chest and is flung through a plate glass window as Joshua's car drives away. When Murta rushes to the scene to help, it becomes clear that Riggs is wearing a bulletproof vest and is only hurt, bruised, and furious. He informs Murta that the shooter was the same one who shot Hunsaker from the helicopter and that the assailant now believes he is dead so perhaps they can devise a scheme to take advantage of that. After getting a call about difficulties at his house, Murtaugh and Riggs break in the front door and discover a message indicating that mercenaries have abducted Rianne. Joshua answers the phone and tells Murtaugh to stay near it for more instructions. Spoofing a news reporter, Joshua calls Detective McCaskey to inquire about the recent drive-by shooting. The detective informs Joshua that Detective Riggs was killed in the drive-by. McAllister gives Joshua instructions to locate and take alive Murtaugh in order to ascertain what information Murtaugh may have about their upcoming heroin transaction with Mr. Mendez. After a follow-up contact, Joshua tells Murtaugh to meet them the next day at El Mirage Lake, a dry lake bed close to Victorville, California, and that all they need to know is what Michael Hunsaker told him before they can release Rianne. The following day, after dropping Riggs off approximately a quarter of a mile from the meeting spot, Murtaugh leaves him there. Riggs, armed with a sniper's rifle, lies down in some dry brush and waits. Suddenly, a white limousine, a black SUV, and a helicopter approach, and ten or so armed men get out of the cars in the helicopter. Murtaugh demands to see his daughter. Rianne is pulled out of a car and Joshua gets out of the other side. The armed men order Murtaugh to take his hands out of his pockets before they move forward. When he does, he reveals that he is carrying an armed grenade. Joshua comes up to Murtaugh and whips up his arm, revealing a gun, which he uses to shoot Murtaugh in the shoulder. After that, everyone scatters, but the grenade is just a smoke bomb. With his weapon drawn, Riggs fires at the two men standing on either side of Rhee and then hits the limo driver. When Murtaugh yells at his daughter to flee, she leaps into the vehicle and drives off. Riggs then shoots another bad guy and manages to get Joshua in his sights. Just as Riggs is about to pull the trigger, McAllister shows up and orders him to surrender, which he complies with. Murtaugh sought cover behind his car and made an attempt to flee, but he was apprehended shortly after as the helicopter pursued Rianne in the limousine, forcing her to high-center the vehicle and be seized. As Joshua gets ready to question Riggs, he introduces his associate, Endo, an Asian man who specializes in torture. They have Riggs hanging from ropes around his wrists naked, with water dripping down over him from above. 
Endo has the ends of some battery cables and a sponge in his hands, which he touches Riggs's torso, causing extreme shock and pain. Joshua had promised to kill Riggs quickly if he would just tell him what Hunsaker had told them about the impending heroin shipment. So Riggs figures he was in for a long night. When Riggs finally passes out, Endo tells Joshua that he thinks Riggs doesn't know anything, and Joshua gives the order to kill Riggs. Just as Endo is about to deliver the last shock, Riggs bursts to life out of nowhere, headbutting Endo before lifting his legs and breaking his neck with them. Unaware of the specifics of the heroin transaction, McAllister has Murtaugh strapped to a chair and beaten mercilessly, with saw poured over the wound in his shoulder. He is powerless to stop it. Unbelieving or uncaring, McAllister gets ready to hurt Rian when Riggs barges in, wreaking havoc right away, killing or maiming everyone except General McAllister, who flees the building. Riggs cuts the bonds that bind the Murtaugh's and they all depart for the lounge that acts as the mercenaries' headquarters. While Riggs manages to spare none of the numerous patrons in the lounge from harm, he manages to shoot the bartender and two more people before spotting Joshua and leading them into the street to resume the fight. Joshua pulls over a car, removing the driver and taking the wheel, and Roger hands Rian over to the care of a uniformed officer who shows up and joins Riggs in pursuit on foot. Since Murtaugh is hurt, he can't run very well, so he yells at Riggs to cut over to the freeway and catch Joshua there. Meanwhile, Murtaugh makes the decision to go find McAllister. By the time Riggs gets to the freeway, a taxi strikes him, bouncing off the windshield and forcing him to end the pursuit. General McAllister and his driver take off in their car from the warehouse. Murtaugh is waiting for them outside, and he calmly stands and fires as the car approaches. Killing the driver, McAllister leans over and takes the wheel, and Murtaugh has to jump aside as the car speeds past. He can only steer as the car enters a main street, where it gets T-boned by a large bus and flips over, leaving the general upside down, bleeding, surrounded by bags of drugs and several grenades as he reaches seemingly attempting to seize the grenades, they blow up, killing both him and the car. After meeting up with Riggs again at the crash scene, Murtaugh informs Riggs that they must return to his house right away because that is probably where Joshua will go. They then take out in another detective's vehicle. Joshua arrives at Murtaugh's house, which is being guarded by two uniformed officers in a patrol car. He pulls up to the police car and shoots both officers dead. He goes up to the house and uses his automatic weapon to blast through the door. No one is home. The front wall of the living room caves in and an empty police car crashes into the room, a police baton wedged onto the accelerator. Riggs enters the room immediately after and sticks a gun to Joshua's head. Police are everywhere, observing as Riggs and Joshua engage in a vicious hand-to-hand -hand battle using a range of martial arts, with each seemingly taking control before things flip back around. A police helicopter's beam falls on the scene, showering water everywhere. When Riggs finally manages to get Joshua in a scissor-leg lock, he lets go of Joshua for some reason, and as two officers approach to handcuff Joshua, he takes a gun from one officer's holster and points it at Riggs. Murta helps him up, so Riggs quickly spins around, brings his own handgun to bear, and both he and Murta fire almost simultaneously, killing Joshua. Finally, Riggs collapses in his partner's arms. After visiting the Murtaugh's, where the front of the house has been repaired after being damaged, Riggs asks Rianne to go get her father, but she declines, saying he only wants her to give Roger something. He then hands her the one hollow point bullet he had saved for his own suicide, wrapped in a red ribbon, and instructs her to tell her father that he won't be needing it anymore. When Riggs turns to leave, Roger follows him, telling him that he must stay and assist him in eating the world's lousiest Christmas turkey. Riggs agrees, noting to Roger that his daughter seems to like him. Roger threatens to kill him if Riggs tries anything with Rianne. Riggs asks to bring a friend to dinner, then calls Sam from his truck. Sam arrives, barking, and once inside the house, he can hear Burbanks. Screeching. In a scene-by-scene -scene exploration, Lethal Weapon weaves a rich tapestry of character development, intense action, and a gripping narrative that captivates audiences from start to finish. Each event contributes to the overall progression of the story, revealing new layers of the characters and building towards a climactic and satisfying conclusion. From the festive opening to the heart-stopping climax, the film stands as a testament to the enduring appeal of the buddy cop genre and the art of storytelling in the action genre. If you enjoyed this recap from Recap Revelations, be sure to subscribe for a continuous stream of similar videos. Your support means the world to us, so don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks a million for tuning in!